What is going on guys? Welcome to the video. My name is Nico Murillo and I was previously a production supervisor at Tesla and I got laid off on April 15th in an unconventional way, but hey, everything happens for a reason, right? Whether it's good or bad, the glass is half full kind of mentality. And I just want to hop on here and say thank you guys. Last week I had 4,900 subscribers and today there's about 19,000 of you guys. So without y'all support, this wouldn't have been made possible. So each and every single one of you guys, thank you guys, I really appreciate the support. This is just a story of how I became to be, who I am today, and my backstory. So I'm Filipino by heritage, I'm single, I'm 29 years old, and I was born in October. So I really wanna make this YouTube channel about something, and I don't know what it is supposed to be, but I want y'all help. Uh, please post in the comments uh, what you guys would like to see I'll tell you guys my hobbies and what I like and don't like. One of the YouTubers I was looking at that had reviewed my, vi my video is I stutter a lot, so I'm trying to fix that. And I'm just a new content creator, so things are just kind of rolling in and I'm kind of taking it with a grain of salt and kind of tweaking it, uh, doing my continuous improvement, right? I have an iPad right here just for full transparency because I'm a new content creator. I don't got all this in my head. Personal finance, I really like personal finance. I'm into financial independence, retire early. If you sacrifice today for tomorrow's betterment, so if you just sacrifice just a little bit of your time, your years, you can be financial independent by a few years down the road. But you gotta be like hardcore about it, right? That's what the FIRE movement is all about. Uh, my Tesla Model Y camper, so I'm really, really interested in trying to make it better uh, of a camper. Like what can I do to make sure this car is fully operational as in like I can stay in this car uh, from day till night and then tweak it here and there. I competed three times in bodybuilding. In bodybuilding, I really like pushing the body to another level and seeing what striations you could get and all, and all things like that. Uh, I grew up in Hercules, California, but I grew up there in uh, elementary and middle school and high school. I went to San Jose State after high school and that was in 2015 with my brother Alec. I'm gonna post his link right here. If y'all wanna give him a follow, he's almost just like me. We are almost basically twins. And I uh, really appreciate my brother because I look up to him a lot. I competed in men's physique 2017, 2018, and 2019. So I competed for three years straight. I learned a lot of discipline, commitment, grit, determination, drive. Trying to stick to, through something a long period of time. And that really taught me like supplement routines, uh, workout routines, it really taught me like really good, hardcore, like tangible grit. And I took that into Tesla. I really love uh, following like YouTubers. One of them is Christian Guzman. He has a fitness YouTube vlog and it's all about like business and the back end and like how things work uh, in operations. And I really got inspired in that uh, back in college. And I really, really understood like how vlogging works and how fast it can really pretty much turn out on YouTube. And when I watched him on it, you know, he was just vlogging uh, the gym and how he got customers and sales and all things like that. And I was just amazed by how, like, how much he put out content on a consistent basis. And a lot of people were following that. So I wanted to be just like him, just like, like a person who would try to go like be, I want to be like Michael Jordan, that's my thing. And what does he do on a daily basis? What is his uh, you know, interests and hobbies and all of that? So uh, check him out, Christian Guzman. He has a gym in Texas called Alphalete Athletics. Anyways, yeah, travel, hiking, photography, fitness, mindset, books, mental health awareness. Those are my hobbies. So a little bit of background, four years old, I used to live in the Philippines for six months. So I went to preschool over there and it was pretty, pretty rough, man. Like, the dirt roads, uh, it was like flooding sometimes, so we had to go upstairs in order to save ourselves from being flooded on the bottom floor. We had gypneys, these things like pretty much are like little small cars that go through the, the, the gravel and all that. It's kind of interesting to see things change. Like you have paved roads here, like y'all have like got it good over here. It's like very different. Now fast forward 2006 to 2012, I went to uh, Hercules, um, middle school and high school. I remember vividly playing football on the concrete with a water bottle, and we would play tackle football on the concrete. That's how crazy 
we were. In middle school, I also started to skateboard. Uh, I really loved like just trying to do an ollie on a big gap and then like officially land it because every time that I tried to do it, it was like I would fail. And that in my mind was like, no, we can't fail. We got to land this trick and we got to land this trick, whatever it means or whatever it takes. Right. And I would just try to ollie something over and over and fall. And once you land it, you get that instant click like, damn, I finally did it. It really gave me a sense of accomplishment. Right. And that's what I really like with skateboarding. Right. Is like once you land that trick, sense of accomplishment and you're like, hell yeah, I did that thing. Right? In 2007, we had lived in the garage before the housing market crash. We lived in a tiny garage with a bathroom and an office. And we would cook basically in the garage, do our dishes in the bathroom sink because uh, my parents were not doing well financially and it really hurt us because we didn't have a place to stay. Uh, so it was a really hard upbringing when we were, when I was, uh, you know, in seventh grade and eighth grade. Cause you know, when you have uh, friends, right? You're not really gonna be like, hey, I live in a garage. At the time, it was very unconventional, right? Uh, rent now is skyrocketed, right? People convert their garages into, they call it ADUs, right? But now uh, it's treated as a source of income. But back then it was kind of like frowned upon, like, oh, you live in a garage, kind of weird. My parents could not afford uh, enough for like a house or an apartment. So we had to do that. So this is transitioning to high school, right? Uh, I started selling candy because I wanted to get money in order to buy a lot of skateboards, a lot of shoes. And it was really interesting to me that you would work hard and then you get money in return. Like you can get a skateboard if you whack the bushes. You can get shoes if you mow the lawn. You can sell candy and then you could get as many skateboards as you want. That the possibilities were endless to me. And I was like, dude, this is, this is tight. Like all you gotta do is work and you get money, you get skateboards, you get shoes. Like let's, let's run it. So I had like four people in my high school with like big duffel bags and they would sell candy uh, for me. And I didn't even know what commission was. And I gave them about a dollar per so odd numbers and they would sell it and I would be you know, doing my thing, selling my candy while they were uh, also selling theirs, but they would take a cut. And I was like, not even thinking about commission, but that was crazy. Yeah. High school, I really learned entrepreneurship at a very, very young age. I would, have, I would bring a duffel bag to high school and then just, you know, spread it out. And then eventually, you know, your boy got in trouble. So yeah. Fast forward, 2012 college. Where am I going to go? Are we going to go to uh, try to apply to Berkeley, UC Davis? Right. And then I applied to San Jose State and then me and my brother, Alec, we got into San Jose State. I went to there for business and I graduated in 2017 and got my business degree in a bachelor's in business degree. Right. I got a 3.0 GPA. So I'm kind of kind of OK. I'm not the perfect person with a 4.0, but hey, your boy passed and graduated. That's all it means on the paper in 2018. Fast forward 2018, your boy started a meal prep business. And I put it all on YouTube. So if y'all very good subscribers, y'all would look into the YouTube and look all the way down. We created 250 meals a weekend in the San Jose area. We had gyms that we parted with. We had a whole fridge set up. We were doing tabling events. We were doing marketing with social media. Uh, we were doing YouTube. We were doing all of that. And then we're trying to blast it as much as we can. Economies of scale, right? Uh, we went to rented out a commercial kitchen and we did as much as we could to make sure it would work. Hard for me to say it didn't work out in the end and uh, we were losing money, which was not a good thing, right? And so we ended up terminating the business. I started the business with my brother, Alec Murillo. And when we started that business, man, we was going hardcore at it, man. We were working all day, all night, you know, cooking, cleaning, shopping, prepping, all of that. And we were trying to make it work, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, you got bills to pay and you got life, right? So I ended up terminating the meal prep business and it was really sad because it was my baby, right? It was like my kid, like I put all my, my all effort into that and to see it go away and go down, you know, if you, you feel like a failure at times, man. And it's like, you know, things happen that you can't control sometimes and 
yeah, it was really hard for me at the time because, you know, you put your all into something, uh, just like in skateboarding, right? Like, you, you try your trick all the time and, you know, you try to land it, but, you know, this time it, it didn't land, right? So, I had to terminate the business. Uh, it was back in 2018, uh, but yeah, we were doing 250 meals a week, but I learned a lot in that business, like standard operating procedures. I learned a lot about uh, following those procedures to a T because if you don't, you know, your, your 12 hour cooking time is supposed to take eight hours now uh, because we, we found a process to make that. But uh, if you're not following the process, you're gonna take 12 hours, right? Uh, like putting uh, the ladles over here versus over there, and it adds up little things like that. So it really taught me about standards and procedures and uh, trying to find an organized and balanced setup so that way there's no room for error. So fast forward 2019, then I wanted to join the Air Force. So I did my best in trying to, you know, get qualified for the Air Force and try to get into the Air Force because, you know, as a failed entrepreneur, what's the next steps, right? And the next step for me, I thought was, hey, let's, let's try to go to the Air Force and be something. I have a degree, I'm smart, right? What can I do? Let's go to the Air Force. So I did, and then uh, went to the MEPS processing center, and then they put a, uh, a heart thing. They, they tried to check my pulse, and they found out that I had bradycardia. So if you guys don't know what bradycardia is, it's basically a low and slow heart rhythm uh, that beats lower than 60 beats per minute. So my heart at the time was only beating at like 29 beats per minute. So about half of what it should be. And so when the officer was in front of me, the Air Force guy, he was waving his hand like this. He's like, are you okay? Can you even see this? Like, is this even like a thing that you're, are you okay? And then I was like, yeah, bro. Like, dude, I'm completely fine. What are you talking about? And so he was like, no, you have to go to the hospital right now, this second. And so they forced me into the ambulance, which was around $2,500 already. And then they forced me into staying overnight in the hospital, which I didn't want to do. And then I got slammed with a bill of like $7,000. And I was torn because I wanted to go to the Air Force, I had a failed business, and I was down in the dumps like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, this is not good. Like, I'm now in debt because you guys put me in the hospital. And after I found out I was in $7,000 in debt, in medical debt, I had a freaking plan to make sure that I pay this thing off. So I successfully paid off all the $7,000 worth of debt, and I was basically debt free, right? But it was the first time that I was in debt, and it was like a pants on fire emergency, right? So Alec, my brother, older brother, he said, hey, why don't you work at Tesla? And I said, no way. I can't do 12 hours, that's too much. But I mean, I kind of did that in the meal prep business. So I was like, you know what, let me go try it out. And then uh, my little brother applied with me at the time too, Christian Murillo, I'll put his link right here. I wanna give him a follow on Instagram. Christian had applied and then I applied. Christian got in a week before me and then I got in a week after him. And so we started on this journey of Tesla and it was great because you know, I had something to do and put my mind towards and work and build up, right? So that's what I did. And then I found out about Dave Ramsey, about get out of debt, save $1,000 emergency fund, save three to six months of expenses, 15% into retirement. And that's what I learned when I found Dave Ramsey, right? It was like mind blowing to me, like get out of debt. So I had to get out the $7,000 of debt, which I did. And it was uh, life changing for me because it was the first time that I was in debt because after college, I had no debt at all. And $7,000 was like a, damn, I'm in trouble. This is a pants on fire emergency, right? And so I found out how to budget. I found out how to save and invest. And I found Robinhood. And uh, I started listening to the podcast about Dave Ramsey like every day in 2019. And I remember running it over and over. I was obsessed with it, right? And yeah, it was pretty cool because I saved $20,000 back then in about 2020 to 2021. So that was really interesting. Uh, so the Air Force denied me, then I got into Tesla, and then I was building my wealth through there. And I was saving like 10% uh, of my income gross into this thing called employee stock purchase plan. So every single month I was saving that. Also, uh, there's these things called restricted stock units that I was saving and I did not 
spend any of it. I saved it and I made sure that it stayed in the account and didn't even touch it for the whole five years that I was there. My restricted stock unit and my uh, employee stock purchase plan is around $80,000 right now. Maybe in another video, since I'm in personal finance, I will show you guys uh, the back end of it. Uh, it's really good because I haven't sold any of it and I talked to the E-Trade guy and he said that it's mine because I put it into it and Tesla can't touch it because I own them already. So $80,000 is in there, don't wanna touch it, save it because you never know if Tesla blows up, right? Which they did in like 2021. Oh man, y'all see that, it's crazy. Anyways, in 2020 to 2022, I was working two jobs. So I was working Tesla and I was working GNC. So those two jobs allowed me to save and invest into the stock market. And I was doing that on a continuous basis. Maybe in these future videos, I'll show you guys, uh, yeah, the Robinhood account. Basically what I'm doing is living in the car for five years, saving and investing that portion into the stock market, appreciates, and then pretty much you'd be financially independent. And my thinking is maybe go to Bali, Indonesia, or the Philippines, where the dollar is a lot stronger, right? In Bali, Indonesia, I visited in September, and it was $2 a meal, it was 60 cents for, for gas, it was just mind-boggling to me, like you can save so much money there, but if I'm going to retire, like if I'm going to save money and invest and then pull from that money to do whatever, the best place to do it is not in the United States, it's somewhere else. But I just want to be full transparent. That's just a, that's just a, a plan that I might do. So the plans might change, right? Plans always change. And that's what is, that's what I'm thinking, right? Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like the video of my story, you know, just go ahead and give the video a like. Uh, comment your thoughts. What should I do next on the videos? Uh, subscribe if you haven't. If you're new to the channel, thank you guys for, for uh, supporting. And catch y'all in the next one. Thank you.